Hello and welcome to my Cinema 201 final blog. Today I will be talking about the 1941 film Citizen Kane, which was directed, produced, written, and starred Orson Welles. During this blog I will be talking about some of the form and content of the film as well as cinematography. But first, I'm going to talk a little bit about the film and give a brief summary. Now the film recounts the life of Charles Foster Kane, a wealthy newspaper tycoon. Now the storytelling isn't done in a conventional manner, it is actually done through flashbacks with interactions between some of the major characters that were a part of Charles Foster Kane's life. We open up on a shot of Kane's estate Xanadu. Inside we see a dying Kane on his deathbed, holding a snow globe. And as he dies, he utters the words, Rosebud. These words are what set the newspaper world into a flurry as they try to uncover the meaning behind the word Rosebud. The task is left to one of the reporters for News on the March, running Kane's obituary, Jerry Thompson, as he goes on a journey talking to various characters that were a part of Kane's life, including his best friend, Jedediah Leland, and his second wife, Susan Alexander. As they start to recant his story, Jerry learns of Kane's life, starting off in Colorado as a young boy up until his death in Xanadu. He learns that Kane wasn't always a power-hungry individual. At first, he was an idealistic reporter, wanting to report news that people would actually want to read. In his growth of the company, his character started to shift as he brought on producers from competing news sources. These characters are what influenced uh, Kane's character to change from being idealistic to being almost ruthless in the manner of which he drove the company and his life. So the scene I'll be talking about today is the one in where his mother is essentially signing Kane's life away. We open up on a shot of a young Kane outside playing in the snow. As the camera actually starts to pan back out, we start to see that he is being viewed from inside the house through a window, first being interacted by his mother. As the scene progresses, we notice that the room is divided up into three portions, essentially. The camera is centered on his mother, his father on the left, and Walter Thatcher on the other side. As the scene progresses, we notice that the camera maintains this focus on the mother, but at the same time, it focuses on Charles outside. This is known as deep focus where the entire shot is actually in focus from the foreground to the background and everything in between. This is critical as it shows the importance of actually all the characters and not just Charles Foster Kane or his mother. As the scene progresses, we start to see the characters are actually divided up now in separate sections. Uh, Kane's father is now in the middle and we see his mother in the foreground now writing some uh, writing essentially his life away to Walter Thatcher who is now to her side now this is significant because it shows that she is the one that's actually in control of the entire situation of Keynes's future but we also notice that Walter being at the side is a direct influence on her this is vastly important as he has actually more to say than Kane's father who is actually stuck in the middle powerless as to do anything about that situation all the while, we have a young Kane in the background who actually has no say in the matter whatsoever, and his fate is left in the hands of his mother. The tilt up at the end of this scene is actually used to show a little bit more emotion of the mother. Uh, it's a bit of a contrast between being sad yet happy that Kane will have a future, although it'll have to be away from them. <laughs> 